What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Elemental Game Channel. My name is AJ Gels. How y'all doing? I decided to take a break from my day-long binge watch of VTubers. It started as a joke, but I've actually been <laughs> spending the last couple hours watching them. I it just they fascinate me, man. I I don't I don't get it. That and shuffle dancing. TikTok and YouTube, just, just, I, I've, I don't know. I'm, I'm not meant for this world anymore. What am I doing? Oh, that's right. I, I, I said, uh, I said, uh, I think it was on Sunday. Yeah. I said I was going to do, uh, do this, do this, uh, return to the weekly show on Monday and now it's Tuesday. So of course now today is the day that I'm, I'm doing the show. Now my, uh, I, I woke up yesterday. My voice just was not having it. So eh, it's back today. So I thought, eh, you know what? Let's. Let's do this. So, uh, we've got a I, I've I've got a pretty good uh, good packed show for you guys today. I think we're gonna be looking at like four articles, uh, the Pokemon uh, presentation that uh, covered uh, I think what some Pokemon Snap news, uh, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl coming to the Switch, which I've seen some of the footage. I'm not super impressed. Uh, I'm I'm getting me entirely honest, and. Uh, uh, another Pokemon thing that I really don't know a lot about. I've heard people kind of like mention it in passing, but you know, well, I don't know. Well, you'll get my kind of first takes and all that. And then finally we'll end with the PlayStation. Uh, I almost said PlayStation direct the PlayStation uh, state of play. That was last week. So there you go. Good packed show. Let's just uh, kind of start things out with our first bit of news from eight days ago. Molly Taylor of, I do believe this is a PC gamer article. Let me, Fish out my mouse. There we go. Yeah, PC Gamer. All right. Uh, so, yeah, Stadia's 4K gaming claims uh, come back to haunt it in class action lawsuit. <laughs> oh, man. Look, you, you all should know by now, if you've listened to the show long enough, you listen to me uh, talk on this channel. Look, I, I... Nine times out of ten, hell, 99 times out of 100, I'll side with the company, uh, when it comes to all these class action lawsuits and everything. And yeah, frankly, on this one, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I feel like the class action lawsuit in this case, it, it, it's not, not I'm, let, let me, let me try and start the sentence over. Look, most times I, I, I side with companies over the class action lawsuits. Cause I feel like it's either it's, an uncalled for lawsuit or it's just overly petty. And I think this is the, this is the latter. I think this is an overly petty lawsuit because look, did Google lie? You know what? I'm not going to go so far as to say lie, but I would say they over-exaggerated what Stadia could do. Let's be honest. We all knew when they said, well, this is the internet quality. This is the this is the internet uh, speeds that you need to be able to, to stream your games at 4K and blah, 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 blah. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, there's no way in fucking hell that is what you need to stream your game to, to stream the games at 4K and everything like to your phone on a car trip. No way in fucking hell that that works. And, uh, yeah, and people are, people are mad and people are like, Ooh, it, it didn't, but, I, but I still think to sue them over this is a little, <sighs> it, yeah, it, it's just, it's a little petty. I mean, come on, you got, I, I think you got tricked a little bit by Google's marketing and you know, they, I, it, again, it's one of those things. Do they sell you a false bill of goods? Yeah, probably. Guess what? Companies do that. Companies always over exaggerate and, and say, you know, well, we said this, but if you read the fine print, there, you know, you're not going to win this lawsuit against Google. It's just, it's kind of ridiculous. Kind of like the next lawsuit that we're going to be talking about, which the the lawsuit against Sony right now, I think, is a little ridiculous. I think that one's at least more ridiculous than this one. But uh, th this is one of those that I can't say I blame the people. Suing Sony, but at the same time, really, like, oh, so Sony exaggerated claim, or not Sony, sorry, Google uh, exaggerated claims. So did uh, it in or uh, id software and Bungie. You know, ooh, they exaggerated claims. Yeah, who, who doesn't? Maybe the maybe these maybe they un, they stepped a little further. Look, don't take my knowledge of the legal system as gospel because I don't know much about the legal system. 
Uh, but to me, this doesn't scream, oh, they, they lied in their advertising. This just sounds like what anyone else does when they advertise. They say, you know, this is the greatest thing ever. This is this, is this, 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 this. They make claims, and then in the kind of like small print, it's, well, well, actually, this is what happens. Let's actually get into the article now. A class action lawsuit has been launched against Google Stadia for unfair and deceptive trade practices, end quote. Yeah, again, I, I I think that you can make this against just about anyone for any product. I Again, may, maybe it's just me, but that's that's how I read it. Uh, stemming from promises that the Stadia, uh, the Stadia, that just doesn't sound right to me, um, would run games at 4K and would perform better than Xbox One X or PlayStation 4 Pro. Uh, the 42-page suit targets Google as well as Doom developer id Software and Destiny's Bungie, uh, stating that all three companies have misled people in some capacity about Stadia's ability to run all games in 4K at 60 FPS. It was originally filed back in October 2020, but has just uh, gained more attention after being transferred to federal court. id Software was targeted uh, regarding its initial claims that Doom Eternal being playable in true 4K on Stadia, which they later walked back to 1080p at 60 FPS, or unsampled to, uh, to 2160p in 4K on 4K displays. Uh, the suit also named other Doom games available on Stadia and claims that id Software, quote, wrongfully generated millions of dollars of revenue, end quote, as a result of this allegedly misleading claims. I, I, again, what, either people either they've walked it back or they've just done it, this is again one of those one of these things that I, I want I want people to understand I'm not trying to sit and go oh yeah companies should be allowed to say whatever the hell they want and they they should be able to uh, 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 that they should say these things you know and mislead people what I'm saying here is is this enough to sue? A massive company like Google over, I, I guess. I guess that's what that's where I just kind of sit here and go. Look, they said one thing, they kind of tricked you into subscribing to it. Okay, don't renew your subscription. I mean, I I, I hate to tell you, you know, it, it's just me. It, it's just it's like I said to me, I. See what they're doing is over exaggerating and then walking it back and it just it to me it just seems like they're doing what just about any other company does when they advertise. I mean hell again I remember the time that I got tricked into buying a Hardee's sandwich uh, because they had a lot of a lot of breasts on a uh, on a commercial and I'm like huh that, you know what that sandwich looks good guess what I went and I went and bought it and guess what the sandwich didn't taste like like soft breasts breasts this is breasts 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 this is I'm not drunk I swear to god I'm just I just can't speak uh it, it didn't feel like a, a nice busty woman giving me a hug it it tasted like asshole so you know that that's uh yeah there's my analogy there <laughs> oh that was horrible uh, let's keep going here. Bungie was also called out for similar reasons with the complaint stating that the studio, and I quote, uh, knew or should have known that Google was making misleading statements about the Stadia Pro subscription plan and that Destiny 2 would not be playable at 4K at uh, 60 FPS gameplay that the Stadia service offered and that uh, consumers were being misled about Destiny 2, unquote. And again, it's like I said, this just seems petty. I, I again... Maybe you want to say, AJ, no, you're totally wrong. No, this is a, a very legitimate lawsuit. Companies shouldn't get away with a, 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 away with shit like this and all, all the stuff. You know, if that's your take, hey, man, more power to you. I don't disagree with you that what's... I, I think where you and me disagree with this is that it's worth suing over. Do I think it's right that Google said all this stuff? No. I, I do not think it was right that Google promised all this shit with Stadia. But at the same time, I have to sit and go, it, it sounded like they were selling us mana from heaven. There's no way in hell any of this would work. And lo and behold, it didn't. How? Stadia or Google's had to shut down their, uh, their um, studio that was specifically started to make 
exclusives for Stadia, which again, I'm sitting here when I first read that article, I was like, oh, <laughs> I was laughing. I was laughing my ass off going, yeah, anyone could have told you this would fail. And then I realized it wasn't Stadia itself. It was just their internal development studio. But I mean, it was absolutely, but still, it's funny to see the studio go down before they've even launched anything because, because Stadia is already on its last legs because most people, I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to think the best way to put this. It, it's because I stand by it with Stadia. I think most people who have the strong enough internet connection to make it work either have a good gaming PC or they have a console. They have something that already lets them run games at that high enough level. It's just Stadia definitely, I think, would target a portion of the market. I just don't think it's a large enough portion of the market to make something light as big as Stadia uh, economically viable. Yes, I guess it would make sense that a company like Sony could, you know, that operates something like YouTube at uh, at a financial loss could maybe run it. But I don't think that they're willing to try and compete with Xbox, PlayStation, Steam, the Epic Store, which is gaining traction, GOG, which has its own little niche section of the market. I, I don't think it's, it's really willing to throw its hat into the ring to fight these companies, which, frankly, if it gets rid of its own development team that's going to make uh, Stadia exclusives, it's basically become now an online store in a way. Yes, I know it's not exactly the same thing as Steam, but it's, it's similar enough, in my opinion, that they're, they're not going to keep throwing money to fight with these other more established... Um, uh, these other more established stores and uh, outlets for games, it, it just it just doesn't make sense. You know, I I, I think uh, I I've seen other articles that were it was either people that were connected to that Sony stu that I keep saying Sony fuck me that Google Studio because I guess that's just such a weird thing to say. Uh, we're saying uh, that really Google just should have bought smaller development studios instead of start trying to start their own from the ground up. It would have been smarter, but you know, whatever. When does Google do something that's uh, exceptionally smart? Um, uh, no, I didn't just say that Google overlords, please don't delete my channel. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Uh, the suit also cites various tweets made by Stadia and its vice president, Phil Harrison, including one in which Harrison states that all launch games for Stadia would run at 4K. Spoiler alert, they didn't, with many games being upscaled instead. Uh, I would say with many games not working at all, but whatever. There's There you go. There's the tweets. Um, again, I, I've seen people who were playing with the low, with the bare minimum internet that that Google said, oh, you can have this internet, it runs fine. I've seen people play with that with that internet speed and going, this sucks ass. Again, going, yeah, I, I knew it would. Uh, the lawsuit is seeking to cover anybody in the U.S. Uh, who purchased the Stadia Founders uh, Edition, Stadia Premier Edition, and slash or a Stadia Pro Sub, which uh, the plaintiff claims they and many others purchased based on the information and reports uh, contained online that the Stadia was more powerful than the leading gaming consoles and would display all games at 4K resolution, end quote. And again, I, I think that at some level, if you believed that, you... I don't want to say you deserve to get misled, but at the same time, really, you thought that was a deliverable goal? Like, as soon as somebody says that, your antennas weren't flying up going, whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute, what? I, I think there is some level as a consumer that you have to kind of, uh, you have to notice when somebody's bullshitting you. That's just, I, I still think there's a level of that. Uh, the plaintiff is seeking a whole bunch of financial compensation, including damages, attorney's fees, and, quote, uh, disgorging of all profits, benefits, and other compensation, end quote. The suit also demands more transparency from Google, requesting that Stadia publicly reveals the resolution and frame rate of every game sold on the platform. Um, it's hard to say. There should be an end quote in there somewhere. Oh, wait, no, never mind. We already read the end quote. End quote. I'm, I can't read. Ignore what I'm what ignore what I'm talking about. Uh, it's hard to say if the lawsuit will end up going anywhere. The demands from the plaintiff are lengthy. Invalid points out. Uh, invalid points 
are made about how Google initially marketed the Stadia, but whether this amounts to uh, materially misleading customers is now for the lawyers to argue. The platform hasn't been having a great time recently. They recently shut down their in-house development studio despite saying progress was going great. Uh, and Terraria co-creator Andrew Spinks um, angrily pulled any plans for a Stadia port after troubles with Google disabling his accounts. Yeah, again, that's I look. Stadia was a to me was going to be a shit show when it came out, and yeah, it's not disappointing there. Look, like I said, with a, one one last time, I don't disagree that what Google did was a shit move, but at the same time, I just don't think this is a worth suing about, and b, I I like I said, I think I think on some level as the consumer, you have you know when say especially those of us in the gaming field. You know, who, you know, we get advertised video games all the time should have heard that, oh, we're going to bring every game to you in 4K should have gone, whoa, gone, whoa, wait a minute, what? And immediately, no, you're being, you're being bullshitted. I'm, I'm just saying that's, that's something that gets me. But, uh, you know what? Let's move on to, uh, to another lawsuit. I already mentioned that Sony was also uh, facing another lawsuit along with Google. Uh, the lawsuit Sony's facing is over controller drift, which to me has just always been a natural state. It, 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 it's always been a thing that just happens with controllers. I mean, yeah, this is super early in the console's lifespan uh, to be for some people to be facing controller drift, but... I, 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 don't, I don't know, man. I, suing over this is, at first I thought was just kind of weird for something that happened. That, that's not just a solely Sony issue. It happens on everyone's, uh, it, you know, it happens on everyone's console. But after kind of reading this article, I really kind of uh, got to the point that really, I, I don't think this has any legs. Um, by the way, this is a Sammy Barker article on uh, Push Square, by the way. Uh, just because it seems like Sony, uh, for their joysticks, use basically the industry standard technology, which really, again, according to this article, that really hasn't changed in decades. Uh, so, I mean, it, really, anyone could be facing this issue. It just seems a little weird that this is going against Sony uh, now, particularly. Let's uh, let's hop a little bit into the article, and I'll keep, you know, I'll, I'll drop in with my, my comments uh, the discussion over controller drift is not a new one, as this issue has occurred uh, since the advent of analog sticks decades ago. However, the subject has attracted uh, increased media scrutiny in recent years due to the Nintendo Switch and now its Sony new uh, and now its Sony's new DualSense controller for the PlayStation Five that's under fire. I mean, hell, I'm facing uh, control. You know, I'm having controller drift issues uh, on my Switch. Granted, it's on my Joy-Con that's broken, so <laughs> I guess I don't really have anything else to say. I mean, look, I, I've had some controllers that have only last me months until I start getting this issue, and I, I think my first PlayStation 4 controller lasted me two years before I had any sort of issues with it. So, I mean, it, look, controllers just kind of... I, I don't want to say it's a crapshoot of what you get, but sometimes you get ones that just last forever. Sometimes you get ones that don't last that long. And then I think you also have to ask the question, is it, are you doing something that's maybe, are you being harder on this controller than that controller? Like for my current gen uh, controllers, I'm being super careful with them, trying not to drop them, trying not to, well, I mean, obviously you always want to try not to drop them, but I mean, I've knocked my PS4 controllers off my desk. I mean, that's kind of one, the the reason my uh, special uh, Death Stranding controller uh, doesn't work anymore is because I've knocked it off my desk one too many times. It just, it happens. I'm, and again, this, this is a situation where it sounds like I'm like, oh, well, it's the gamer's fault. Eh, I'm, I'm not trying to blame anyone. You know, I mean, I get it. Shit happens, but it doesn't mean you sue Sony over it. That's just, uh, so, you know, I, I just, I, I don't think this lawsuit has, it, it, this lawsuit in any way is going to work out. Although, you know what, I say that and then it's going to end up being, well, they settled because that's just how every lawsuit works nowadays. Um, let's see. Recently, a legal team uh, launched a class action lawsuit against the Japanese manufacturer due to ongoing issues seeking uh, compensation for its clients. Now, an in-depth video published uh, by iFixit, I think that's correct, uh, explains why controller drift occurs in the first place and the reason it uh, and the reason it's become so commonly uh, so concerningly common. 
Uh, it's worth noting that while the video focuses on the dual sense, uh, the same issue can be attributed to practically all controllers. They're all using the same parts after all. In the video, it's explained uh, that where to the potent potentiometers, I probably mispronounced that, but I took a shot. Uh, within the analog sticks, the hardware designed to read your inputs is to blame. Uh, however, it points out that the components console manufacturers are using, and I quote, could easily exceed their operating life in just over 400 hours of game time, end quote, which is concerning. It's perhaps worth noting uh, that we've used controllers uh, like the DualShock 4 for thousands of hours uh, and never had an issue, but it would seem the analog sticks aren't really designed to have such lifespans. There are other issues that can occur. Uh, contaminants like plastic dust uh, caused by components grinding together can cause incorrect readings uh, while uh, stretching the spring that uh, centers the analog stick can create an incorrect uh, neutral point. Uh, as you can tell, controllers are complicated beasts and any minor fault can lead to drifting. The video uh, concludes that given the nature of the hardware, it's surprising that console manufacturers don't allow you to easily swap out and replace analog sticks. Uh, so you could get that new controller feeling for a fraction of the price. Unfortunately, it concludes that unless you're willing to rip your pad apart, uh, you may have to buy a new one if you're experiencing drift, unless, of course, you have any active warranty. Well, I mean, also, I mean, it may be the drift I'm facing isn't horrible. Usually you can jiggle the stick and it'll reset itself, at least as far as I've dealt with it. But again, it, th this is one of those things that, you're suing Sony over an industry-wide problem. They use pretty much the industry standard of things. It, it, even this article mentioned, you know, we've used controllers for thousands of hours and never had this issue. I, I've said this. I've used controllers for years and never had the issue. And then I've bought new controllers when those were starting to die. And I had that issue within three months. It just, sometimes it's a crapshoot of whether or not the controller experiences the issue. I just think suing Sony over it is... I, I, again, I I don't think loss. I, this, this is the just the kind of the society that we live in. This this overly litigious um, society where it's you know it, it, it's it, it, like this is how we talk to companies now. You know, it's it, kind of like back on the Google thing. You know, they are doing advertising that's yeah maybe a little scummy, but it's not. I wouldn't say it's full blown misadvertising or something like this, where it's, you know, they use the industry standard and it sucks industry wide. So we're going to sue to get them to do better. I, that just, to me, seems like there's better ways to do it. I just, to me, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Again, tell me what you think. Again, on this situation, am I being too lax on Sony? But I, I just sit here and go, it's a little over the top to sue them over this, again, in my opinion. Jeez, decided to <laughs> to take a, a little break after that last article. My head was starting to hurt. Turned my monitors off, lied down for a little bit, ended up taking a two-hour nap. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> next article, Cyberpunk 2077 update 1.2 delayed to back half of March uh, after CD Projekt Red hack article. Connor Sheridan of uh, Games... This Games Radar or Games Radar. There we go. I, I get them in GameSpot flipped around because of the color scheme and everything. Just always reminds me of each other. Um, look, man, I, I get everybody saying that they hate Cyberpunk. You know, everybody getting pissed about everything. Look, I, I've made my thoughts on everything pretty clear when the whole debacle happened. You know, what? I, I, t I took about like a month or so off of the game. I hadn't played it um, up until about last week. And I got to say, man, coming back to it. I still stand by my thoughts on it. Look, this game is not The Witcher. It's not going to compete with The Witcher. It's not going to be anywhere near what it was. But um, I still enjoy it, man. I, I still enjoy the combat. I enjoy the leveling system. Uh, I love Night City especially. I think uh, I think I was listening to uh, Co Carnage talk about it, you know, uh, another YouTuber. And uh, I think he said it best. It, Night City is such a really cool world that they have built, they just need to fill it with shit. And I agree with that. I, I think it, it can feel very empty, but at the same time, Night City is really dope. Um, I mean, I, I'm generally just having a shitload of fun with the game, despite its visual issues that I just don't think are ever going to get fixed, in all honesty. Yeah, there are problems. Uh, the crashing issue has gotten fixed a lot. It just 
all in all, I enjoy the game. Having said that, I'm, again, not going to say it's going to be The Witcher. I think it's going to stay at an above average 8 out of 10 for me. Um, but, I mean, over the weekend, though, when I was visiting my little sister, I was talking to her boyfriend. Um, he's a gamer, you know. Um, but he said, you know, he played it. He's just not a fan. Granted, I mean, he was playing it on last gen, and everybody knows how the game was facing issues on last gen. But I get what he's saying, though, especially with the fact that he said he didn't, that he found the opening to be too slow, um, even though... I said, you know, and I made the argument, well, really, the watch out, look how the opening is structured. It's very similar to how The Witcher 3 opened up with White Chapel, or White Chapel, White Orchard and everything like that. Uh, but then he even told me he wasn't a fan of The Witcher 3, which kind of explained why he wasn't a big fan of Cyberpunk. He's, I, I guess, just not a fan of those kind of games, you know. Whatever, I'm a big fan of them. So I, I find with Cyberpunk, this is a game that you either can see past the flaws and really come to enjoy the game, or you can't. It's one or the other. I'm finding very few people going, meh, it's all right. I'm finding people who are saying it's dog shit or people who say, you know what, despite everything, I really like it. And I'm 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 in the like it camp. So, you know, take take any, long story short, take whatever I'm about, to, you know, whatever I say about the game for what it is, you know, for or for what you will. Ah, sorry. Had to take a take a drink there, trying to caffeinate a little bit, trying to get rid of this headache. Shit. Uh, the next big Cyberpunk 2077 update has been delayed with developer CD Projekt Red citing the recent cyber attack it suffered uh, and the scale of the patch itself as causes. Cyberpunk 2077 update 1.2 never had an official release date set, but CD Projekt Red uh, said back in January that it would be released in the following weeks after update 1.1, which arrived on January 23rd. According to the studio's revised timeline, version 1.2 is now scheduled to arrive sometime in the later half of March. And, you know, I can say this because I also um, just decided, you know what, I'm curious if they've done anything new to, like, the character creation um, or anything like that. You know, if they gave us more options, because really the options were a little limited, uh, in my opinion, at launch. Uh, so I started a new character, and yes, uh, there are a lot more cosmetic updates. Yeah, I think some more hairstyles. Um, you know, if you play as a female character, more options for nails, uh, eyes, uh, are, there's way more options for, um, literally just your, uh, your character's eyes, uh, hair, like I already mentioned hairstyles, tattoos, there's a lot more of them. So yeah, there's a lot more, um, a, a lot, a lot more things that you can do with your character. If anybody was interested, uh, where the hell did I just leave off? Sorry. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 update 1.2. Never. Uh, okay. Yeah, we already read that one. All right. Here was, here's where we were. The studio is still keeping quiet about uh, what the next big update will add or change, though it did note that it, and I quote, goes beyond any of our previous updates, end quote, with, quote, numerous overall quality improvements and fixes, end quote. Here's the full message CD Projekt Red shared on Twitter. Mm. Let's see here. I'll just yeah give you guys a chance to... There you go. You can pause and read that if you'd like. We're not going to go over the whole thing. It's basically just, you know, quick explanation to everything. CD Projekt Red uh, pledged that it would refuse to pay the hacker's ransom demands, uh, along with sharing the news uh, of the cyber, pa uh, cyber attack on its servers. Earlier this month, it seems the hackers made good on their threats uh, of proliferating internal files and documents. Oh, fuck you. Um, What was it? Um proliferating uh, internal files and documents as the company has uh, started issuing DMCA takedown uh, requests in an attempt to cut down on the spread of stolen source code for its games since then, according to Vice. Oh, leave me alone. Uh, even without the hack, CD Projekt Red uh, would be in a tough spot after a troubled launch of its most anticipated game. Hopefully, Cyberpunk 2077 update 1.2 helps mark a turning point in its story. Uh, we'll keep you updated and all that. Um, yeah, I, I, well, A, anytime a hacker, you know, hacking groups or whatever do, you know, pull shit like this, I, I've got an issue with that. Um, you know, I, I think that's, you know, clearly dick move uh, hacking into, you know, companies. Um, private. No, I, all in all, I, I just, I, I still think that, I, I, I really hope that this, this, uh, update, um, really, uh, I, for a second, cause with shit going on, I'm really hoping my, my software locking up itself isn't locking up here. I'll make this, try and fix this. Uh, I hope this update really kind of game. 
bullshit launch. So there you go. Let's hop into some videos.